You're listening to Tim Bolkley's 5-Minute Bible, introducing Genesis. As the first book of the Pentateuch, Genesis serves as a kind of preface or introduction to both the Jewish and the Christian Bibles, though perhaps in different ways. Jewish tradition calls the book Bereshit, from its first words, in beginning. Christians normally know it as Genesis, from the Greek word meaning creation or generation that's the name given to it in the Septuagint because it gives an account of the origin of everything and because of the phrase these are the generations of Eli Toledot in Hebrew which seems to structure the book generations there is genesis in Greek it contains the story of humanity from creation to the emergence of Israel as a people first in Canaan and in Egypt chapters 1 to 11 tell of events that involve all humanity in particular the creation of the world and of humans the first sins in chapters 3 and 4 the flood the tower of babel and the scattering of humans into tribal and language groups and the second part of the book tells of the calling of one man abraham and the story of his family down to the death and the burial of joseph chapters 12 to 50 as you'll see we can argue about exactly where this section starts in the early chapters the telling of the story seems to alternate between two narrators so Genesis 1 and 5 contain similar key words and phrases and show a strong interest in orderliness and factual information like numbers Genesis 2 to 4 by contrast are more vivid and lively but more impressionistic these sorts of difference can be spotted in other parts of the book and beyond so with evidence that suggests that Genesis might be an edited text such as breaks, repetitions, doublets that's two versions or seemingly two versions of a same or a similar story clustered vocabulary this sense of different narrators has led historically minded scholars to distinguish several strands in the book for a long time these were viewed as different sources and identified by names J, E, D and P the Yahwist, the Eloist, the Deuteronomist and the Priestly in a similar way, different collections of laws in the later books of the Pentateuch sometimes deal with similar material in ways that might reflect different periods of Israel's history. So all of those things lead historically minded scholars to think of a history behind the book as we have it, to think that the book developed, perhaps over centuries. Other scholars have been more impressed by the unity of purpose and teaching in Genesis and speak of a single author. On the one hand, this view can fit much better with the traditional association of the whole Pentateuch with Moses reflected in the traditional name the books of Moses or the books of the law of Moses Jesus and the authors of the New Testament use Moses perhaps as a kind of shorthand to refer to these books on the other hand there are radical scholars who also stress the unity of the book but see it as being written at some point quite late in Israel's history about such questions isn't and probably never will be proof you'll have to make up your own minds Genesis focuses on six principal people Adam Noah Abraham Isaac Jacob and Joseph the story is presented in a framework and with a focus on their family lines family words son father descendants and so on are particularly frequent in this book and the inheritance of God's promise is a thread that ties sections and stories together another theme human sinfulness redeemed by divine forbearance and providence also serves to unite the book the content of Genesis is closely linked to the story of Israel that begins in Exodus 1 and continues to the end of Kings the book also serves as background or foundation for much that follows in the whole of scripture the stories of the flood in Genesis 6 to 9 and the patriarchs in 12 to 50 are echoed in song in the Psalms and in the preaching of the prophets creation and human sinfulness that follows it in Genesis 1 and 2 and in Genesis 3 and 4 provides a necessary foundation to understand much of the theology expressed in the Old and New Testaments so this book is if not simple then at least unified and it's certainly got a richness and a depth and it's of vital importance to anyone who wants to read any other part of the Bible. Great stuff. Bye for now.